There we go. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's go. We got a today is a another major daf, and a major daf in Hilchas Cholamayid, Hilchas Maris Ayin, um, Hilchas Shabbos, Amir La Akum. I mean, this we could do this daf from today till tomorrow straight. <clears throat> Don't get nervous though. I mean, we have, like a, we have like a two hour share separate from this daf. Um, if you want, yeah, I just uh, you tell me when. <laughs> You tell me when, and we'll try and figure it out. But it's not, it's not pushing. I mean, yeah, yeah. Natalia, Natalia Landau might make it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, it's no, it's not complicated. It's just the nuance. Like actually, tonight's daf tells you how complicated, how complicated um, Hilchas Chalamay it is, which is interesting that the Gemara the Gemara says that. Um, um, Okay, so that's a hakdama because it comes up so so often. Is Amir Lakam is also meaning you're not allowed to tell a guy to do any sort of malacha for you, regardless. And most people think it's just Hilcha Shabbos, but it's really everything. And everything is uh, you're not allowed to ask the guy, including Hilcha Shalomoy. The only thing is, and then how is it that that you know the famous sock that everybody knows is that they leave the uh, they left. Um, they leave. They leave their car by the mechanic, right? And so everybody knows, right? So everybody knows that you can leave the car mechanic because he's just getting paid for the job, right? So can you do the same thing on on Chalamayid? Give you know if you're giving in uh, you know clothing to the cleaners or the car, so so and he gets paid by the job. So then can you let, let him do it because he's working for himself? Now, if to give it to him on Cholomayed, for him to finish it on Cholomayed, that's not, that's not going to help you. But if you give it to him before Cholomayed and then after Cholomayed, then it's... Uh, so why, you, Siaka, why, why, can't, say, why can't a contractor work for me? I'm getting paying him by the job. What? A, a contractor that I'm paying by the job, why can't he work Cholomayed? What do you mean? You know, which, what scenario? I'm pay, paying him to build a deck for me. He gave me a set price for the deck. Right. So, oh, so why can't he work for you, right? Right. Because he, he's, he's working for himself. So the what? answer is because you're saying because he's working for himself, right? Right, right. So that's, so that's exactly what this Gemara is going to be, where there's Maris Ayan issue. The Maris Ayan issue is that... <clears throat> People are going to think that he's your salaried worker, not your contracted worker. Yeah, so what Gamara are you going to do? Gamara says we well, don't see him. It's not such a problem. But Mara signs even Not on a not on a derabonim. You know how I know that? Because we learned it in Shia this morning, in the morning Shia. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have had that answer on the tip of my tongue. So, but, Yaakov, why don't we say like why don't we say that if everyone knows nowadays that people have contractors? And but I'm, meaning, didn't we say that about lace tops? Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. apply the idea of Mara sign. Correct, correct. So that's that's where you have a problem because nowadays, when you see a guy doing construction in a yid's house, you think he was he's his. You think he's his hourly worker, or you think he's contracted? Okay. Every nobody's going to think it's an hour, hourly worker, right? So the Mishnah Brura actually brings this sad and Hilcha Shabbos that nowadays you would be allowed to let a guy. Do construction in your house on Shabbos even because nobody's going to think of the Mara sign. But then he says you really should not rely on this Kula. Ramesha Feinstein, uh, I don't have my Sephardim with me, so, but Ramesha Feinstein, I think, matters it. The Mishavura talks about a Shul or a Yeshiva that it's going to be, it's not going to end up opening, it's going to be a Hefzid. Which uh, then you would be allowed to, you would allow, you would be able to rely on this on this kula. Okay, but anyways, this is the big, this is the big tumble, and it comes up a lot because people, it's a big sacrifice for people to to do construction, to stop construction for a week, as it is. There's two days yom to first days, two days yom to second days, and then the middle week, and the contractors are very, very unhappy. They're very unhappy with that. The only thing is, sometimes it could also be a hefsin maruba or even a davar of it because. Because 
if the person's paying rent for a second house while they do the construction, right? Sometimes they have to pay for an extra month's rent, which could be a good few thousand dollars, depending on the on the person whether that's a hefset or not. So that that also plays into it. And then another interesting thing is a lot of times the contractor's a yid. His goyim are hourly workers, right? So now, how do you look at it like that? Do you look at the contractor or do you look at the hourly workers? Okay, but now it's already, if we continue at this pace, we will never get the daft done. So now let's see Let's see how it goes. Yes, so, um, uh, but, uh, where did we leave off last night? Uh, Amar Avashi, I think, no? Three lines five. up? I'm a moment, Bayes. He goes three lines up, Amar Avashi. I think it was Thanks. a little bit higher than that. Ferrets, you know what I mean? Come on, work with me here, Ferrets. I think I started. I think I started, and then I then I stopped because. Uh, um, We're running out of time. We're running out of time. So, yeah, I think it was a. Uh, La McCune. Uh, this is a Base toy. I'm sorry. No, no, Marion. Marion Bray the Robin. That's who it is. Marion Bray the Robin. It's a six lines up from the bottom. Two words from the end of the line. So Marion braid the Rav, Umar braid the Racha braid the Rava, right? This is still an Avelis. Um, so they were partners. Havlu Ahu Gamla the Tura, Bahadi Adadi, and they had this. Uh, they had this uh, Gamla the Tura doesn't mean it's a cross between a camel and a and a and a shore. It means they had like a yoke for a shore. I mean they rented it out. They had a partnership. They had a you know, had a, a rental, a, a shore rental. Yeah, but how they with each other? Israel they milsa, but mar braid the racha braid the rava. So something bad happened, meaning a relative passed away. Upaskei legamle, and he pulled his camel, his 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 cam. Sorry, I said I said the tura, right? He pulled out his his what do you call it? His uh his animal, yeah, because he wasn't allowed to do work, right? So now the Gemara is saying, well, why did he do that for? Why did he do that for? Well, because uh, it's the other his partner is going to get a loss. Yesterday, just changing gears back to Avelis. Why he's the oval? His partner's not an oval. It shouldn't he shouldn't have to cost his partner anything. So Ravashi Gavra Rabba Kamabre the Racha Avid Hachi, right? This somebody so great like him did this. Nehidul of Seda the day loychayish adacherim. Um, so for his loss, we're not chayish adacherim loychayish. He's not chayish for his friend's loss. Now his friends, the rental's not gonna, he's not gonna be able to rent it for as much money as he could. Right? So Tanya, because we learned the price of Muscharin or Muskarin, it's a If somebody's rented out, if the oval is rented out to somebody else, to other people, the Yasu. So they could do it. So what's a shot that he backed out and gonna cause his partner a loss? So more answers, who savar Adam Khan? No, it's not a kasha, but what did he think? Right? So who savar? The reason why he pulled his animal out is because Adam Chashuv Shani, somebody who's Chashuv is different, right? So because for him it's for sure Aser to uh, to do it because people learn from him. So if he's going to be Makel, then other people are going to be Makel too. We'll see that later on tonight's and, stuff. A wild story about and this. that what, and that pushes off the loss for his partner, potential loss for his partner. Yes, yeah, so I. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, that's what it's. I wonder if he would reimburse him. No. They bring down from the Ritva two sheets about that. One says he did reimburse him, and one says that as a partner, you're obligated to lose. Okay, but then what's the first shot? The first shot and says, Enechanami has to reimburse him. He, re he reimbursed him out to the Mishra He doesn't to, have to. According to the first, the first, when the Gemara says, How did he do it? What do you mean? According to, okay. That's how, that's it, the Machla. I hear that's interesting that whether he has to reimburse him or not. Um, are you saying that that's the other sheet is saying that that's the risk of doing business with a partner, right? Right, you become, you become obligated in whatever his uh his stringencies are, his chumras. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So now we start tonight's stuff. So, Omar Shmuel, Makabli Kibaylis Besaychat Chum, people Goyim that are Makabal as a contract within the Chum. This is talking about Hilchus Shabbos now, Asr. They're not allowed to do construction. Chutz letchum, mutter. Outside the tchum, it's mutter. Why? Because nobody's going to see them. Right? It's not marasayin, because nobody's going to go out there. They're not allowed to get there anyways. 
right? Omar Apaba, but filu chutz l'tchum. Even if one does chutz l'tchum, lo yamar nel like a mas the makar v'lasim. That's only if there isn't a city that's close to it, which is going to be able to see. They'll be because two thousand amos is not far, and they'll see workers going to this guy's house. I will aiko mas masa the makar v'lasim aser. I'm sorry, that's so much. When does he say to add the tchum is mutter when there's no city next to it? But if there's a city next to it, then it's going to be also because people are going to see. So Amar of Mashar should be chileka masa the makarva lahasa um lahasa um be chileka masa the makarva lahasa nami la yamaran. I'm sorry, I I messed that up. According to Rav Mashar, he adds something else. He says even if it's in a city, that's that's uh there's no city next to it we only said because it's not common for people to go there but by where it's common for people to go there for us when they come right then it's us so you hear what he's saying comes out from this gemara that to ask a guy to do construction for you on cholamayid is actually worse than asking somebody to do construction for you for a guy to do on Shabbos. Because on Shabbos, if it's outside of the Tchum, there's no Cheshash, anybody's going to come see it, so it's no problem. But in the Tchum, but on Cholomai, there is no Isr Tchumen, which is a different Shiloh. Why there's no Isr Tchumen on Cholomai? But there's no Isr Tchum on Cholomai. So therefore, anybody can come on a Cholomai trip and see this house that's being, that's owned by a Yid, and they see Goyim working there, so then it's Maris Ayin on Cholomai. So that's so, so Yaakov, if you own property in a guy, you should get a town, you could do whatever you want. Oh, so this is is it in the Tchum of a Yid or not? You own Alabama, you own in Alabama, right? Well, let's say Mama says, like, Mobile, Alabama, let's talk re- realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Mobile, Alabama, this Shiloh comes up a lot in Harlem or in town or in Brooklyn in these Schwarz neighborhoods that no Yid is going to. But the problem is that it's in the oh, Tchum. very Yid could go to because not a Yid invested there. Mobile Alabama, there's, there's, there's nobody, or, or, or something Tennessee, you know. How do you know Yid? What do you mean? How do I? How do you... so, Yaakov, even, even more than that, we said that somebody can't hang their raincoat on Shabbos, even the uh, Bahadre uh, Hadarim. It doesn't, I thought there's Mara sign even would... just for yourself. That we did this morning, um, um, whatever, in the regular morning share. No, but this is the Rabbanon, that's what I'm saying. Zev asked. Before I think that's what he was asking. Well, yeah, I think that yeah, 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 yeah. he said on a derab. Amir Alakim is derabon, and so derabon on chadri chadarim is okay, which is a good cooler to know, by the way. Uh, but anyway, but you're right. So it's but it's out, but it's outside of the city. I don't know how do you know that there's no yid in the mobile Alabama. You got to check chabad.org or whatever and see, and see if they got a chabad there. Jacob, I can be made. I can be made. There's no chabad in mobile Alabama. I can be made in that. Okay, so if you know that, then they could do it. Then you if he's say, being made, that means he knows there's 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 talk of Jews that go there. What does that mean? There's Jews that go everywhere for real estate, right? Okay, but he's talking about living there. No, right. if people, what it has to be that they live there, or they're going to pass through. That's what we ask, Akiva. So the, that's the question. The question is, do we combine this kula with the other one, which is that no, nowadays nobody does this by paying being paid by the hour, right? So therefore, um, right? So nobody does it by the hour. So then combining that with the other cooler, sometimes sometimes we are makele. Yes, sometimes we're makele. I have another hour that might answer it also. Yeah, go why, ahead. Why does the Gemara choose to use the term If it's out of the Tchum on Shabbos, they can't go there. What do you mean? Uh-huh. I mean, so there might always be a Yid around. We don't care about that. We care about Shkiach. Uh huh. Here, that's a good diak. I like that. I like that. I don't remember ever seeing anything like that in the Paiskim, which was meaningless. Because yeah, so according to according to what you're saying, based on that, if there's no minion and no shul, then you don't have to worry. Be worried about klal. Because why would you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even if yeah. the yid is there, even if you know a yid is there, if it's not that's shkia, not shkia. Shkia. We're not about that's it. Not yeah. Right. I hear that. Um, Do you ever see anything in the Paiskim like that? No. <laughs> okay, I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, I'll have to. I'll have to look. Believe another See, yeah, they break down from the from the, from the Shofan Arab, that it has to be that that people know that Yid owns his property. Another thing. That's another thing. I'm so saying they, so. It, 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 it's le- it's also less shiach to to think 
in Mobile, Alabama, that he, you wouldn't know the specific property that he had owns in those types of places. You might know in New York if he didn't own a certain type of property. Even not in Harlem, you're not going to know that. You know. What do you mean? Most are owned by Yidden. I guess uh, maybe in Harlem. <laughs> right, in New York, Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so this is the big tumult. It comes up a lot. And, uh, and uh, yeah, whatever. I guess Jack, everybody... Jack, he, ha he happens to be right because I manage a property in Mobile, Alabama, 1900 units or something, by a group of them who have never been there. They're I the hear. owners. I hear. Okay, so they're he's not wrong. Right. Okay. I hear. So Tysus, this first Tysus here goes through the whole sugi of dropping off stuff by the laundry um on Shabbos. Well the mice we passing that it's okay as long as you give them enough time to do it if they're contracted. If you pay them by the hour, then that doesn't work. Yeah. And this Shiloh comes up a lot also because people think, oh, so if he's a if he's a contractor, so he could work in my house. There's another Isser. He's not a, the guy is not allowed to do the work, but basically show you throw. Just like we saw by the oval, that if somebody else can do work for the oval or can't be in the yid's house, the work from the guy is not allowed to be done in the yid's house. Meaning, let's say you live outside the trum, right? On Shabbos. So, and you're making an addition to your house on Shabbos. There's no other yidin around, it's just you. You're still not allowed to have him do the work in your house on Shabbos, right? So, it's in your own house, it's not allowed. Yeah, fine. Okay. Uh, meaning in your own house that you're living in. Okay, let's do it. Uh, okay, uh, fine. So for Marzucha Bredo of Nachman, so he had contractors build him a, a house outside the Tchum. Ikler of Savar of Huna Barchinana, Veloy Olu Lagabe. And when Savar of Huna Barchinana traveled to his house, they didn't go into the house. Because they felt that he did it the iser, and they're not going to use the house. So, um, uh, is this another chumra of uh, of what's it called of Adam Chashuv? Yeah. So, um, yes. Let's see. Let's, Shabbos. Yeah. So let's see. Vigadamri. What's it going to be weiter? Who nami loy He himself didn't go. Into it either. Oh, Varma Shmu Makabla Kibalis Pesai Chatchum Osser Chutzla Tchum is Mutter. So what was wrong? This was outside the Tchum. Adam Choshev shining. Exactly what you're saying. And Adam Choshev is different. Now, there's a lot of kashas on this. Be well, so let's just do that in the second test. Be Gadamri, so you were saying about Tivna Bahadayu. What happened was is that he helped them out with the with the grain, with the straw, whatever, to make the bricks. So since he helped them out, then it already showed. Meaning, like, I guess he said, hey, you're going you're going to Lowe's anyways. Let me bring you some stuff. So that Mimela showed that it's not that it's not um, a strict contract. He's sort of helping him, so therefore it's also. So good, it's all very nice, but this should ask them from going into the house forever. Right? By the way, if, if a guy does this for somebody, and he builds a house, it's really not posh that you could ever live in that house. Right? Because it's it's if it's a malacha done for a year for yourself for Shabbos, it's really also la'ilam. But here it should certainly not be also la'ilam. So that the pais can have different ways of understanding it. Maybe because it was done berabim, so therefore it was done berabim. Um, therefore you have to be more machmer. Okay, whatever it is, fine. Rav Chama Sharulhu Lavungi the Beresh Galusa Lamevet Lu Avid the Bechalu de Mayada. They allowed these chair these uh, I guess carpenters who fix chairs. To do their avoid and cholamayir. Amar kivin the agar loy kashakli. Since they're not getting paid anyways, shereshu yehuda kamesharshule the less lamba. So basically, what they do is they just get favors and stuff like that. So therefore, it's not an issue. Meaning the construction of it, it was a tsaruch mayid. So they were allowed to fix, and the the chairs or tables broke. So they were allowed to fix it. But the issue was with getting paid. Are they allowed to get paid? Right. So therefore, he said that you're allowed to. Then, uh, then because because they're not really taking any money from it, just seems like that was their uh, that was their way of doing things, right? Um, yeah, so I mean, they didn't get paid direct. They sort of got tips. I don't know if it means tips, but uh, they got EPIS, a way of getting paid, but not direct payment. So therefore, it was okay on Cholamayid. Fine. Tana Rabbanon. Mekamel kibalas b'mayid la soisa la acharamayid. You're allowed to make a contract with a contractor. On Cholamayid, as long as he does the work after Cholamayid. Uvamayid, 
Usr, but he's not allowed to do the work on Mayad. Now, also what's confusing here with this is because Mayad usually means Yamtif. What happens? He's saying Chala Mayad. Right? So it's a little confusing. But either way, so again, you're allowed to go make a deal with a guy and tell him, do it after Yamtif. The Pais can say that if he didn't listen to you and he started it on Chala Mayad anyways, you're still allowed to benefit from it because you did yours. You you just you did yours. You don't have to necessarily go stop him. This is a common question. Also, people have shikses in the house on Shabbos or on Cholamayir, and the shiksa starts doing the laundry because that's her regular derech. So they say, do I have to stop the shiksa from doing laundry? Yes, you 100% have to stop the shiksa from doing the laundry. On obviously, unless there's a heter to do the laundry, but if there's no heter to do the laundry, it's all adults in the house or whatever it is and they have what to wear, then you have to go tell. You have to do yours. So here, you did yours. If he decides to uh, do it anyways, so in your house, you're in control. But if he takes your suit to the cleaners, you're not allowed to, bring, you're not allowed to drop off stuff by the cleaners either on Cholamayid. But if you, but if whatever this deal was, and he you're decides... Allowed drop, you're allowed to drop it off knowing that he's not going to touch it to... to uh... The Mara sign, you're not allowed to drop off stuff by the cleaners. It's interesting because you're allowed to pick stuff up from the cleaners. That you're allowed to do. Yeah. Obviously. So how do you know if you're picking or dropping? Because I guess the way you see, I guess you go in with clothes and you go out with clothes. Uh, you know? That, that's, it's interesting because I would have thought that you cannot pick up clothing from the cleaners. I would think that's worse. Right? But I don't know. That's what the place can say. I got no vote. Yeah. Fine. Klal ishal davar. So what's the klal? Kol shu. This is mamish the main rule right here. Kol davar shu aisa. Whatever you're allowed to do, I'm rule nachri va'aisa. Then you could tell it to a guy, and the guy could do it. V'chol she ain't aisa, ain't I'm rule nachri va'aisa. And whatever you cannot do, you're not allowed to tell a guy to do. Right? Let's I'm say you're not. Let's say you're not telling the guy to do it. He's just doing. That's what a shiksa shiksa's cleaning in the house. No, we just said you have to stop them. You have to stop the shiksa. It says Kalshu Dover Kalshu Aisa, whatever you're allowed, you're allowed to tell the Nachri the Aisa and the guy can do it. And if I'm not, not telling the guy, I'm, he's doing it on his own. No, but you have to stop him from doing the Malach Where does it say that? Is that someplace else? I don't know. It doesn't say that Beferish and Shulchan Aruch, as far as I remember, which is really meaningless. But uh, it's you can't because they're doing a guy comes a guy comes to you on Shabbos and does malacha. You have to stop him, right? You have to stop him. People don't hop this because here's the problem. Okay, again, I don't want to get bogged down with this, but this whole concept of hinting to a guy. So you think, oh, you hint to a guy and it's allowed. You are almost in ninety. I don't know, I'm going to say 99%, 95% of scenarios, it is absolutely usher to hint to a guy to do anything for you on Shabbos, Cholamay. not only that, but if the guy voluntary, voluntarily comes and does malacha for you, you're not allowed to benefit from it. If you're sitting in the dark, and, and a guy comes in and says, hey, why are you sitting in the dark, and opens the lights for you, you got to leave the room. Why? Because it's also to benefit from a, from a guy's malacha for you. If the guy does it for himself, then you can. So an indirect benefit we allow you to do if you hint to the guy. The heat, the heat is cold in the house. Heat is a different story. Heat we allow Amir Lahakam for. Why? Because it's a hakal chayli etzel latina. Everybody's considered sick when it comes to cold. And for, it's, for, Amir, it's Amir if you hint at them? You don't have to. That's the joke of the whole thing. You're allowed, well, Most of the time when you're allowed to tell a guy something, you can tell him straight out. We talk a do should have a shear on this. It's mamish. The whole the hinting thing is mamish throws everybody off because they say, well, if I'm allowed to hint, so of course if he does it on his own, it's mutter. No, very rarely are you allowed to hint. The only the main scenario we are allowed to hint to a guy is if you have the lights on in your room and you want to go to sleep. So the, the oven is the oven is on and it smells like gas. Second, that's that's sakana stuff. You can't mix sakana into it. We're talking about you're sitting in your room, the lights are on, you want to go to sleep. If a guy shuts the lights, that's not a direct benefit. That's an indirect benefit. Because theoretically, you could sleep. You should put a pillow over your eyes and you'll be dark and then, uh, then you'll, be, you'll be able to sleep. So by him shutting, it's an indirect benefit. So we're not going to allow it straight up, but we will allow you to do it, to, to hint it to him, and then that's okay. Then you're allowed to hint it to him. 
And certainly if he shuts it off himself, then it's okay. But a direct benefit from a guy, even voluntarily, is not allowed. It's not allowed. So now we have an idea for our Shavuos share. Maybe. Maybe. You'll get everyone awake. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear. If you keep the lights on or off, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. You're allowed to arrange a a on a contract with somebody for after You're not allowed to measure. You're not allowed to weigh, and you're not allowed to count. That you're not the way, you're not allowed to do it um, the way you do it bechol because that's mamish sort of like malacha. Even though the halacha is is that you're allowed to talk business on chalamoyed, you're right. You're allowed to talk business, but here when it's actually the business is, I think this is the pshat that it's directly related to this contract that you're making with the guy. Then it's not allowed. And as far as I know, we do pass in this way. Fine. You are not allowed to mate a behema on chalamoyed. Now this means actually physically mating them, not just putting them into the same barn, right? This means you actually have to mount the male, right? Because that's that's just a lack of profit. You're not allowed to also use, meaning um, because it's aser, you're not allowed to use it, meaning that, why is that malacha? It's just doing a natural thing. And psulim mukdashan also, it's a psul, it's a puzzle, it's a puzzle hector, so why can't you? No, those are not allowed for that either. Fine. If you have a chamoira that's um, that's uh, tava, that's in what do you call it? That she wants it. She's in heat. Then marvin zachar. Then you can put the zachar on a because then she's going to get cold. If you don't do it, she's going to get cold, and then she will not have. She will not be able to get pregnant anymore. So that's actually going to be a loss. Which again, I'm not so sure. Why is that a loss? Isn't that just lack of a gain? Or do we say, no, I guess that's the whole point of having the animal. So therefore, you're going to lose, you're going to lose the whole animal. I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand it. It's, it's like it's standing, well, like she won't get, she won't get hot a month from now or two months from now. Like. It seems, I don't know the biology of it, but it seems like, yes. It's, it's it going down from Rashi Madur Shnir that it, it, it could affect her mating in the future. Yeah, it can. Well, it, it, that, that's my is a hefsid. Is uh, it? A, why is that a hefsid? Because that's one of the things that animals use for. I'm saying that's. No, it's not. It's not just. It's not just a gain. It, that, that's what the point of it. Part of what the animals are used for. It's, the it's part of an investment in animals. What? It's the only thing a chamayra is used for. Right. That's true. So okay, but the male chamayra is what's used. The chamayra is just for breeding. That's why I'm you can't honest. breed. You've lost the chamayra. Yeah. It, it could probably take away from the value because it can't have any children. It can't have any offspring. So it takes away from the value. That's it. You mean it dropped in price because it, it doesn't... It drops in price, drops in value, yeah. That's very, okay. Very good. Very good. So that's a loss. So then that's allowed. That's a loss, yeah. But in the other animals... So I guess this is only by a chamoira that has this issue. Other animals, you, you're allowed to put them into the, uh, what do you call it, a corral or barn, whatever it is, and then then that's fine. You're not, that's, because that's indirect. Fine. So you're not allowed to be medayir. So dire comes from the word to, to live, but basically what it seems is that in order to fertilize the field, so they would put a fence around the animals, like in one corner of the field, and let them fertilize the field with the manure. And then they would move them, move that whole fence over, and then let it do that, and then et cetera, et cetera. But if they came by themselves, then it would be mutter. And you can't help the workers. And you can't give them a shomer to watch the sheep. To make sure to do this, because that means that you are participating in the malacha, right? So if he's a schir b'shabes for the week, or he's rented out, meaning the workers rented out for the week, rented out for the month, rented out for the year, right? And or and then shavua here means not a week; it means shvius, but of seven years. 
then Messiah Nassan, you're allowed to help them out because that's not direct since they're working for you anyways for a longer period of time. You're allowed to give them a shomer to watch the sign. Rabbi Oimer, B'Shabbos, B'Toiva. You're allowed to do this on Shabbos, just uh, like getting, B'Toiva means like to get a toiva as a favor. B'Yomtev, B'Mezayna. So Yomtev, you're allowed to give them food. Right? It doesn't have to just be a favor. Can you, you can actually pay them with food. And B'Mayed, B'Schar, and Cholamayed, you could even pay them. And I'm Rabbi Yosef, Hilchus Rebbe, the Allah is like Rebbe. Right? Fine. So basically, you according to Rebbe, you are allowed to help them and for different things, different uh, for Shabbos is obviously the most chomer, so you can only, you know, do a favor for them. A yomt if you can feed them, and maya cholamay you could even give them schar. Fine. Now just to chazer over the la- the first mission of the parak on was talking about if a, somebody has an olive press and he's about to start pressing the olives and then he lost his relative, or there was another einus or his workers ripped him off. So then it was a machloekus Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yosi. Rabbi Yehuda said that he can do the basics to make sure that the, the, the oil doesn't get ruined, the olive oil doesn't get ruined, and then he has to stop. And Rabbi Yossi said you could do everything like regular because once you're doing malacha, that's gonna, because something's going to get lost, you're allowed to go all the way with it. So we have the exact same Mishnah, just for whatever reason, the Mishnah brings the opinions in the, in the opposite. If his wine, wine was in the bar, so it's getting ready to be bottled, Either a novel, a novel happened to him, or an oinus, or he got messed over. So zayla v'gaimer v'gaf kedarkoi. So he he can sprinkle and finish it, and even bottle it in the regular way. Do Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yudaimer, Oisla limudim b'shvir shalayachmas. You got to do some sort of tricks. I don't know if it means tricks, but you like you cover it to make sure it doesn't bubble over, whatever it is, and then and then you're fine, right? So again, the same exact machlokes. So that's immediately what the Gemara asks. What do you need two cases for? Why do you need a case by oil and why do you need a case by wine? So if it would have just said the first Mishnah, which is by oil, by Ikom, Rabbi Yaisi, there Rabbi Yaisi says it's Mutter Mishum de Mishcha Nafish Pseide, because olive oil, it's it's a big loss. Avachamra de Loy Nafish Pseide, but wine is not such a big loss. Aim a Maida to Rabbi Yehuda. So maybe Rabbi Yaisi would be Maida to Rabbi Yehuda. That it would. If it only said by wine, by he come Rabbi Yehuda, maybe there Rabbi Yehuda was very strict because it's not such a big loss. But here by the olives, by the olive oil, maybe he would be uh, to Rabbi Yaisi that you should let him do everything because of the loss. So that's why we needed two cases. Fine. Does, Sorry. does big loss, does, does, does nafish psede mean? A big loss, what we call hefsed maruba, or does it mean that the, the the loss of the oil is complete, whereas the loss of the wine it just turns into vinegar? It's not complete loss. In other words, even if I had just one bottle of it, one bottle of olive oil that turns sour is useless; it's garbage. One right, bottle that, of wine, because what, who said? I mean, wouldn't it be tully in the amounts? What are you saying? It's no right. When oil goes bad, it goes bad. When wine goes bad. It's um, not about hefsed maruba. The term hefsed maruba is a monetary, large monetary loss. This is about a complete loss. That's why. That's why I understood it. Yes. Yeah. Um, very good. So Amar of Yitzchak Bar Abba Mantan Ashinu B'Maya B'Davar Abba Deleik Rabbi Yosi. We had this yesterday. But who's the one that says that if you? But if you have a Davar Abba, right? We said we know that if you're going to take a loss, you're allowed to do the Malach Cholamayir. So who's the opinion that says you're allowed to do it, but it has to be done with a shinu? The like Rabbi Yossi, that's not like Rabbi Yossi. Now Rabbi Yossi holds you can do the malacha straight up without a shini, which is what he just said in our Mishnah, right? Since you're losing the wine or losing the oil, you're allowed to do it. He doesn't say anything. You do it regularly, it doesn't say anything about a shini. So I'm Rabbi Yossi, Allah, Rabbi Yossi, Allah is like Rabbi Yossi. Fine. Ba'omi name me Rabbi Nachem Rabbi Yossi. Ma'u l'misha chavisa d'shikh rabbechayla d'mayala. What is the din? Can you seal bottles of beer on cholamayid? Right? Because maybe beer is not going to be as big a loss as wine. So Amr Lahu Sinai, so Sinai said, Amr Lahu, he said to him, Sinai Omar Halacha Kerab Yaisi. So Sinai said that they, and Rashi says that's Rabbi Yosef, because everything was, he was so clear and everything was as if he mamish got it from Sinai. He said that the Allah is like Rabbi Yaisi, right? That you do a regular, for a hefzid, you're allowed to do a regular, you don't need a shinui. 
But maybe Rabbi Yossi only said it by wine. By beer, would he say it? Right, by wine, it's going to be a bigger loss. I don't know, bigger loss, whatever, however you want to tie it to Gershon. A bigger loss, a more complete loss. I don't know. Shechra Nami is Pepseida. Wine also, uh, beer also has a loss. Amr Abai, I'm really aim. Right, my mother said again. We know that Abai wasn't his real mother; it was a stepmother who took care of him. And Abai used to say over a lot of medical things from her. Barshis Savi Vishia mi bar timne Better six bottles of beer, Peretz. I'm sure you'll agree to this, but I don't know where he is. But uh, yeah, better six bottles of beer with a cover than eight bottles of beer and no cover. Right? I think we would all agree with that. I think we would say one bottle of beer. Is is without? I mean, defizzed beer. Who likes that? Fine. Okay. So here we go. So here's now. Here's where this really should like. This is sort of like a hakdama for hilchas chalamayir, right? So hilchas mayir ke hilchas kusim, bahalacha, right? The halachas of learning chalamayir are like the halachas that the kusim keep with halacha, right? Um, meaning. The Kusim, Rashi says, they were Geri Arayas, right? So they mean they were scared of lions, so they became Gerim. They randomly took halachas that they keep, and they randomly don't keep other halachas, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. So the Gemara is saying, which is quite an interesting comparison, the Gemara is saying that Hilchas Chalamayir, there's no rhyme or reason to when the Chachamim allowed certain things and disallowed other things. So there's no, just like there's no rhyme or reason for the Kusim, there's no rhyme or reason. But Allah is the which makes it extremely difficult to figure out what the halacha is by Hilchas Chalamayid, because you can't compare one case to the other, as we're going to see in a minute. There's just no, you just can't compare it, because every little case has a different has a different outcome according to the Chacham. Lamai Hilsa, Samar of Daniel Barkatina, Laimar Shehen Akuras, Bein Lamida Zulazu. What do you mean? He says it's it's similar to a woman who cannot have children, right? Um, Meaning, because a woman who can't have children, so basically all she's providing her husband with is companionship and nothing else, right? So, so Gemara is saying that's the same thing with Chalamoyed. You can just you can just learn the halacha from it, and you can't learn anything else from that halacha. No comparing one thing to another thing. You can't learn one thing out from the other. Meaning, so when you're learning Hilchas Chalamoyed, meaning when you learn other halachas, Hilchas Shabbos, Hilchus, whatever, all the Hilchas Kashrus, you can take the lessons learned from that and apply it to to other other areas. But Cholamayid, you can't do that. It's because it's 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 one again, one dimensional. I guess is that that be the way to say? It? What's the point? Like, what's the point of telling us Kusim like Akuras? What's the point of the moral? Point is telling you don't think that you can compare any sort of um, Hilchas Cholamayid. You can't, right? A mushal, right? You're allowed to, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to, not really, L'chatchil is supposed to cut your nails on Cholamayid, and you're not supposed to shave on Cholamayid. Why? Because we don't want you to go into Yom Tov disgusting. But Bidiyevid, nails can be cut, but haircuts cannot be had, or shaving can't be had. Why? What's the difference between one or the other? Right? I would think they should be the same. Right? Um... Which what uh, what types of things you're allowed to do laundry for? You're not allowed to do laundry for, um, et cetera, et cetera. You go down the list. It's very very difficult to to uh, to understand hilchas chalamayid because they're not what you would think is one is not the other. Which is going to say Damar Shmuel. Shmuel brings a case. It's not really negayb asmanazeh, but but the zayfsen kuzasav ain't zayfsen chavisa. Shmuel says you're allowed to put pitch inside a jug, but you can't put pitch inside a barrel. Right. And Rav Dimi Maradam or Zayfsin Chavisa Vein Zayfsin Kuzasa. You're allowed to do it to a barrel, but you can't do it to a jug. So Mar Chayesh Pseido, Mar Chayesh Tircha. One was concerned for loss, and one was concerned for Tircha, right? But whatever it is, both of these shitas, whether the one that holds you're allowed to do a small bottle or a large, but you can't you can't compare the two. Meaning, if, if I went and asked the Shaila to a rabbi, he said, "Am I allowed to put pitch or tar inside a barrel?" And they're on Cholomai. The rabbi says, yes, you can. I say, okay, so my small bottle, I could do could it also. Right? But it's not true. Right? And, of, and, and the same thing with the opposite. There's no opinion. There's no clear opinion. Like of, of There's no clear um, comp- can be made from one halacha to another halacha. You know where I find this? 
in the practical, because we just finished learning this in the morning, also opening packages and bottles and all that on, on, on Shabbos and Yom Tov. You could have one shita that says opening a bottle cap is an Issa Daraisa, but opening a package of cookies is Muta Lechatchila. And another shita will hold opening the bottle cap is Muta Lechatchila, and opening the, the cookies, I'm, I'm just using a, a, an example, not a vada, and opening the cookies is a Daraisa. Right, it's mamish. That's why it's very difficult to understand the opening packages because it's it's wild all the differences. But anyways, so Yaakov, don't we didn't we discuss this in the Gari Shabbos when it comes to like over the chol, trying to understand when do we apply over the chol, when do we do not apply over the chol? Then that's another one. That's another one that's very difficult to 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 pin down. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So I had it last week. A guy that does kiruv. So. He's asking, are you allowed to watch a or listen to music on Shabbos that somebody else set up? So I said, I can't say it's us, or it's probably not Shabbos thing. So what happens if it's a yid that set it up? I said, Lachara, then that you shouldn't do. Well, what's the difference? And a whole back and forth of uh, what would be the difference? What's not Shabbos thing? Is it really not Shabbos thing? Are you not turning it on yourself? So then who cares who did turn it on? Whatever it is, these these things are very confusing. What? What do you mean? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fine, fine. I mean, technically, with Ochus with Ochus Chalamay, you have the first Mishnah Bura that says the five the five rules, and the rest of Ochus Chalamay is all the exceptions to those rules. Right, basically. <laughs> right, that's that's what it is. Fine. So I'm gonna buy you. Naktinon, we hold now. Naktinon means it's like a how do you say it? Naktinon means we literally means we hold on to, which means it's some sort of mesayra, as they call it. Hilchas mayed, hilchas shabbos, hilchas chalamayed is like hilchas shabbos. In what way? Yesh man potter aval aser. There are some things in hilchas shabbos that you're potter, but you're not allowed to do it. Yesh man mutal lechatchila, and then there are things that are mutal lechatchila. So chalamayed has the same that has the same type of situation right that some things are going to be mutter and some things are going to be potter but you but uh but they're still also fine ravuna so ravuna rashi says who didn't need the money right but he um he 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 gathered he cut down uh grain on cholamoyed so and and obviously because he was afraid of the loss so acefe rabba bar ravuna the ravuna toichni kemach bamoyed it, right, the Brisa says that you're allowed to grind wheat for, on Cholamayid, but you're not allowed to grind wheat on Cholamayid for after Cholamayid, right? That's a rule that we've been learning also. But if it's going to be, end up being a loss for you, then it's mutter. I'm sorry. If something's going to get lost on Cholamayid, meaning if your grain, if you don't grind it, it's going to get rotten, then you're allowed to grind it on Cholamayid. And things that are not going to get lost on Cholamayid are also. So, that's all where the grain was already detached from the ground, which is what you do when you grind. But if it's something that's attached to the ground, even if you're going to lose your entire field, you are not allowed to cut down stuff that's attached to the ground. And if you have no food to eat, then you could do all the malacha. As long as you don't do the dosh, the threshing with paras, because that's too public. So this b'risa clearly says that even if you're going to lose your entire field, you are not allowed to cut the stuff down, right? Unless you're somebody who didn't have what to eat. And Rashi says Rav Huna was the type of person who had what to eat. So it's a stira. How was he able to cut it down? Again, this b'risa says you're not allowed to cut things down that are attached to the ground. And Rav Huna did that. So Not such a common answer that you ever see in Shas. It's a Das Yochid. This Mishnah is a Das Yochid. We don't go with it. Titania. Something that's detached from the ground. Even if only a small amount of it is going to get lost. Mutter. Right? That's what that's... I don't know if this is where you learn it from, but people ask, Dover Ovid. There's no amount to Dover Ovid, right? If it's going to be a loss, it's going to be a loss, right? It's up to the person, the individual, to decide whether he should or shouldn't, but really Dover Ovid is, just means loss. There's no there's no amount for that. It's not like a Hefzid Maruba in Kashrus, like so, Hefzid Maruba, 
you have to know how much is considered a loss for you. What's a loss for you may not be a loss to somebody else. But Dover Albert is pretty straightforward. Is this thing going to be a loss or is it just going to be a lack of a gain? Fine. But anything that's attached to the ground, even if it's going to be completely lost, it's Asr. Did Rabbi Yaisi say that everything is mutter normally? Rabbi Yaisi, Yadash Nabi Paris. Right? And if it's Rabbi Yaisi, then he should also use Paris. I don't know if that's what you're asking, Akiva, but that's but that's uh No, I, I'm asking Stam. Rabbi Yaisi was always the one who's maker when it comes to when it comes to fall light in general. Didn't we just go through the last two Mishnahis that seem to imply Rabbi Yaisi, Shkhelk, and Rabbi Yudha? Everything, but he was makel that you don't need to do with a Shinoi. A Dabra, but you don't need to do with a Shinoi. But here he's saying that Dover, if it's attached to the ground, you don't have Dover over. Right? Yeah, so let's see, Rabbi Yaisi. And if it's Rabbi Yaisi, you just not be with Paris. That's what God is asking. If it's Rabbi Yaisi, then use Paris because he holds that once you have a hatter to do something, then do it all the way. Right, so who's the one that says that a shina that you don't need a shina in chalamayid if it's a davar avid? That's not like Rabbi Yosi. Amar Allah, meaning because Rabbi Yosi holds you don't need a shina. Amar Allah, achanami kiven the kol yoyim alav beparis taishi. So since not everybody uses a para, heard the nami lav shina who nowadays it's also not considered. A, a shinoi, meaning don't meaning even if you are going to do a shinoi, it's not a shinoi because a lot of times people will do their threshing without any paras. Yeah, fine. You're allowed to grind on chalamayid for chalamayid purposes. But if it's not for chalamayid, then it's also bim tachan And if you grind and you have some leftover. I raise the mutter. You're allowed to use it, right? So, meaning normally you're not allowed to grind, but if you have a davar avid situation and you're allowed to grind, what happens if you have leftovers? Maybe you can't use that on chalamayid because really you weren't supposed to do it. So we say no, it's mutter. Kites it's an eight simple mayid. Let's say chalamayid. You're allowed to cut wood, mayid, right? Shalay mayid also. Shalay let's say chalamayid. You're not allowed to. Then cuts it's vahaiser. I raise the mutter, and if you did cut it down. Then it's mutter, yeah. And meaning in this leftovers, it's mutter. Matil and sheicher b'mayid, the tzarich You're allowed to make beer on chalamayid for for chalamayid purposes. V'shalay the tzarich hamayid aser, not for tzarich hamayid, it's aser. Vim hitul v'hayser hareze mutter. And if there's leftover beer, then it's mutter. Ubevad. Now here's the catch: where the Gemara brings three different cases. It's interesting that the Gemara doesn't go through. There are tirutzim for this, but why the Gemara doesn't say why do I need three different cases? But whatever it is, the main point that the Gemara is trying to get to here is as long as you don't make a harama, meaning if you have beer in your fridge and then you decide, oh, I need to have fresh beer, right? So if you're doing that shtick just because you want to be able to make beer on Cholomayr, that the Gemara is saying not to do. Romenu, but I'll ask you, Stira, Matil and Sheikh, Bamayr, Lazar Chamayr, Vashalay, Lazar Chamayr, Osir, you're allowed to do it for Cholomayr. And Shalai Lazar Chamayr, it's Osir. Echad Sheikh Tamarim, Vechad Sheikh Sairim, whether it's barley beer, well, date beer or barley beer, even if he has old beer, he's allowed to make new beer, beer, Marim Vashaisim and Achadash. You can make a Haroma and drink from the new beer. Meaning, if you're interested in making beer on Cholamayid, you can make a trick and you can you can make the new beer, even though you have old beer in the fridge. Or just Same. leave them open. What? Or yeah, just but, leave them. <laughs> yeah, but. That's true, but you're not machuyim to do that. That's the Gemara saying you're not machuyim to do that. So you see, it's a stira. So Gemara answers tanoi. It's actually machloik as tanoi. The Tanya ain marimin bekach. You're not allowed to do harama. Rabbi Yosef, you know, in marimin, you are. You're allowed to do harama. Right? We paskin and shulchan aruch that you are allowed to do harama. So if you have fruits and vegetables in your house and you want to go vegetable picking or fruit picking. Then, as long as it's a tzarich hamayir, many pies can say that that's that that's okay. But stop going apple picking chalamayir chip you shouldn't do. My father again. My father didn't like it. I mean, when you when you really analyze it, it seems like meikar din. It's okay if you're going to use the apples. Not, or, if, not if you're going to use all the apples. Even you're going to use some. All no, because he was saying that the harama would be okay. But uh, your father you need, didn't like it because. It's... I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly why he didn't like it. He didn't, he didn't feel it was necessary entertainment enough 
to warrant doing an iser of, you know. Yeah, Jacob, that's not why he didn't like it. He liked to go out and spend real money, Cholamoy. That cheap trip, it wasn't, it wasn't for him. That could be. That could be, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm happy because I had no interest in doing apple picking, but that's that's a different point. All right, but, uh, yeah. But anyway, so that he wasn't so pro. Well, even though Meikara didn't, it seems like it would be okay. Fine. Rav, 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 it's the same thing that Rav Huna did before. Rav ga- um, um, gathered his crop, meaning he actually cut it down on Cholamoyed. Shoma Shmuel, Ikbidu. Shmuel heard about this and he was Makbid on Rav. So you see, Shmuel must have held like the the uh, minority opinion, like the opinion that says that you're not allowed, even a Dover of it, you're not allowed to do anything with things that are attached to the ground. So Gemara says, Loi, dechiti hava, delay hava That was a wheat field that it was not going to be a loss for if you left it. Meaning the field from Rav Huna was, was what well, we'll see in a minute, but was not wheat. So therefore it would actually be a loss if you keep it attached to the ground. This was not, so therefore Shmuel was Makbid. Rav, my time of Ovid Hachi, why did Rav do this? Right? Meaning, why did he do it? If Shmuel was Makbid on him and it wasn't a loss, it wouldn't have been a loss, so what did he do it for? So what answers, Ain't my Yoichel, Rav had nothing to eat. So he needed to push it to eat. So we know that Ain't my Yoichel, you're allowed to do it according to all opinions. Um, Ain't my Yoichel Hava. So Shmuel, Laisimu Kameh. So Shmuel, either they didn't tell him, nobody told him that Rav was doing this for for food, because he needed something to eat, or again, this concept where an Adam Chashuv has to be more strict. Fine. And we would see a Nafik Bechumrasa to Medusha. So Rabbi Hudanasiya went out with a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, how do you say this? Signet uh, um, ring? Right, ring, or some sort of ring, right, a signet ring. I, but it was for business. Lachara was a type of ring um, that the medusha that you'd stick in, right? It was like a stamp. The Ishti, so he did two things. He, walk, he walked around with this on Shabbos. The Ishti Maya, the Achim Kfeila, and he drank water that, uh, that a guy, a Kfeila is a word for a guy, that a guy heated up. Uh, Kfeila Armo, uh, an Armenian guy. Shomer of Ami, Ikbid. Rav Ami heard about this. He was Makbid on him. Shomer of said, my time Ikbid. Why was he Makbid? Imishum Chum Rasa, the medusa. If he was upset at him because of the ring, rings and nose rings and other types of rings, whatever it is, are all like kalim that that go and that can be taken in the chutzin. So clearly, we say it's not muksa. And if it's because he drank water that a kveil arma heated up, anything that could be could be consumed when it's raw doesn't have any iser bishalakum. So what was what did he do wrong by drinking water? This is a very common question again in Yana de Yoima. Can you buy a coffee in Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Right? Is it why is it not bishalakum? Right? That that's actually worse because there is the, they're actually cooking the coffee. But a guy, I get this shaila a lot, Baruch Hashem, the people people ask that they ask, can the guy fill up the hot water urn? Right, and the answer is yes, because because you can drink water cold, so the, there's no isubishalakum. Now, maybe it's not advisable to tell him to do that because the guy is not going to know the difference between heating up water and heating up other food and war and cooking foods. Okay, that's a that's a different story. What about cooking the beans? Yeah, so coffee is not as simple. The poets can say the reason why coffee is not bishalakum is the same reason why coffee is a shahakal, not a haetz. Right, because really it's just water. So even though there's coffee beans in there, it's really it's since the bracha is it all, is it all, is it all, Coffee? I'm saying would, is that. Uh, Eight dollars a cup was probably it. <laughs> yeah. The the, the malacha may be spending the eight dollars a cup, but uh, they get it, but they get it on the house. But um, yeah, coffee is I, I think for sure it's ayla shulchan malachim. But anyways. So the answer is Adam Chashuv shiny, and Adam Chashuv is different. I don't remember seeing that an Adam Chashuv should not buy coffee in Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. Although I can say that I once listened to Shiva Yisrael Reisman, and he said he is makbir not to drink coffee from a guy because Lamaisa there are places that hold that it is bishalakim coffee from a guy. But 
He didn't say he wouldn't drink hot water from a guy, right? So maybe he doesn't consider himself Adam Choshev, but I consider him Adam Choshev, right? So I don't know. I never heard of such a thing as any Adam Choshev not being, not taking hot water from a guy. But okay, fine. A person could cut down a palm tree on Cholamayr, even though he only needs the dust of it, like the the stuff that comes off when you cut it. So basically, you need sawdust, and you're cutting down a whole tree or branches from a tree just because you need the sawdust. So Layat Allah Abaya, Abaya cursed him. He was not happy with this psak. Fine. So Ravashi Havale Abba Bishalalia. Yeah, so he Ravashi had this uh uh, what do you call it again? Uh, where's the Rashi? I can't find it. A forest, right? Um, and and the, that was the name of the forest, the Shalanya, the Rav Ashi. Um, so my Daitach, the Ka'amar of Hana, meaning, so, um, yeah, I lost the place here. I went, I went, I skipped a line, I think. Um, so again, Abaya cursed him for cutting down the, the trees just for the dust. So Rav Ashi, Havale, Abba Bishalanya, he had this his forest in the city of Shalana. He went to cut it down on Ravashi. So Rashila from Shalani asked Ravashi, my daitach, what's your das that you cut down the, the branches? That you only you're allowed to cut down a, a palm tree, even though you only need the sawdust. But Abaya cursed him. Amrale, so he said back to him, Lai Shmili, Climber Lai Svirili. I don't I don't agree with Abaya. Ishtamit Narga. And then what happened was is his axe slipped out and Bay La Mifsika Lasake the Shake and it almost cut off his his uh well shaykh. We're not going down that road, Gershon, right? What's a shaykh? Thigh, leg, whatever. It it almost it almost hit his leg. Right? So Shav gave a hadar, um Shav gave a hadar, and then he left it and he came back. Um, father also, yeah, because he came back because he said it must be that Abaya. I, I spoke badly about Abaya, I didn't agree with Abaya, and this is the message that's coming that I shouldn't do it. Um, um, so Rabbi Yehuda, Shara the Me'eker Kisna, Rabbi Yehuda, um, was allowed you to, uh, how do you say it? Kisna is, uh, uh, you're 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 being iker cotton, right? Cotton, right? Ula miktok shusa, and also to take out um, um, Rashi says uh, flax, flax, Yaakov. Ula miktok shumshimi and shumshimi normally is is sunflower, uh, sesame seeds. Sesame seeds, but doesn't really fit into this gemara exactly. That, that sesame, seeds. whatever it is, he allowed you to uh, cut these things. Normally, I buy the hops. Is it hops? Maybe. No, Ksusa I thought it was flax. Yeah. Ksusa, uh, Arsko hops. says hops. Oh, hops. Oh, okay. It's Nancy dealing with beer. Yeah. One second. So Kisna, they tie just flax? Kisna, they say flax, yeah. Kisna, Kisna flax, 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 flax. Them around, around shots. If it's flax, or hops. Ksusa, they say it's hops. Oh, yeah. Okay, whatever it is. These few things that you're allowed to you're allowed to uproot. It's normally a bailer of Yaisa Bishlam a kisna chazi lechafifa. So kisna you could use to cover over food, like Rashi says, teinim and tamarim for for cholamayim. Kshusa chazi l'shikra. I guess that that would be the proof for nowadays. Hops you can make beer. El shum shemi lemay chazi. What are you gonna do with these? Well, I don't know again what they are. Sesame or whatever it is. Chazi lenazuye. Right. So it's um. It's you can use some of the grains of it. The is the shchazi lenazuye the isbu, meaning some of those grains can become um, used on chalamayir. Most of it can't because it takes time for it to become edible. But some you can have a little few grains there that could work. So then you're allowed to do it. Fine. Rav Yanei Havalei Ahu Pardesa Tamata. He says it's Yaakov. He says the pshat is because they're ready right right away. The the small pieces. Right. The small stuff is ready right away. So since so you could do all of it because you're you're able to get something out of it for Cholamayit. Right. Fine. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Rav Yana Havale Ahu Pardesa the Matas Mani B'Chol He had a, a Pardes. A, a, how do you call it Pardes? Uh, not a vineyard. Uh, yeah, orchard. Orchard. 
that it became ripe on Cholamoyed, Katve, and he cut it down because it became ripe. He didn't want to lose all his fruits. So Lashana, um, Shehuya, Kule Amale Pardesai, Lachala de Mayada. So then everybody left their Pardes to take it down on Cholamoyed when they had more time. Why? Because they saw the rabbi did it last year. So, but they didn't know that he only did it because that it was going to become a loss. So they all decided to imitate the rabbi. So Afkar Rabbiana the Pardise, Ahushata, he was Mafkar his Pardis that year. Um because he felt so bad, he didn't have to, but he felt so bad that everybody learned from him Shalai Kalacha. He wanted right? really wanted to teach him that that's not the proper way. Correct, but this is why the Chayra, this is why Adam Chashuv has to be a little bit more strict than, than other people because people people take lessons from the Adam Chashuv and then they and then they, they run with it. Right? Okay. Yeah, fine. Okay, let's just do the Mishnah in a few more lines. So Machnis, Adam Peroisim of Nea How did everybody know that he was Machter? Put up a big sign? No, I don't think they had to know. No, he was the, he for his own. Gained by being mafia. No, he uh, made Paris, What do you mean? They're watching after every move. That's how we knew that he was had it before. That's what he, he, the whole thing. They I watch understand. everything. He they're does. watching every move. So now he sits there in his house and he goes, "Okay, I'm mafia. Nobody knows. Maybe put up a sign. Free, take it. Was that? That's just what he did for himself. They learned. But he said it in his Shabbos drasha. Maybe, but even so, he wasn't doing it to teach anybody a lesson. I think he probably, you're right, he probably did dash about it. he wasn't? It. That wasn't the point of this? He was knossing himself. I thought no, he was trying he to tell them, you can't no, learn wants, from me. He wants, if you're going to learn from me, everyone should be Mafia Yusadis. No one would, so don't, they didn't learn from him in the end. I didn't learn it like that. He, he, didn't want to, he wanted to teach the Islam. It's not. It's not. It's not supposed to be like that. Supposed to do it. But 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 he could have done it. It was a double orbit for him. Actually, Good, the bottom but, he writes. But, the but note, that's not. The he's notes he writes. He was mafkar forever. He gave up the field. The ever was his anymore. No, yeah, he was ma- yeah, yeah, the, the, oh, that's the one mich- opinion. The, the, no, the mikdam brings it down that he gave his mafkar forever out of remorse. But it's the Gemara says Ahu Shata. I mean Ahu Shata. Right. He, yes, that year, the following year. Yeah, the mikdam takes that out. You serious? Yeah. That's what he writes on the bottom. Mithram writes, and in some readings, the words that year are omitted. According to this version, Rabbiani renounced benefit from his orchard forever out of remorse for his role of causing people to sin. Wow. Jacob, hit uh, highlight number 46. It pops up. I, have the, I don't have my iPad here. If you notice, I don't I made... understand why you have to take it out. I don't have my highlights. So, so uh, uh, yeah. uh, take it up with the Mithram. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it either. Um, yeah. You mean, maybe the island thinks, oh, so a rabbi goes to Phoenix. He's staying in a hotel in Phoenix. Preaches. They don't know I'm staying in an Airbnb snoring it. You know what I mean? So do I have to be mafkar Airbnb? Maybe. <laughs> we hear Icky. Wait a second. We hear Icky in the background. We're not, we're not quite sure that. Jack of the you have to be mafkar to Fiat now. And I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> But Siago, what's interesting is all these Gemaras previously is you see that the, the Rabbanim back then, they were a halachal amaisa when it came to their own stuff. And they, they were they were makal on their own on the, the Gavi themselves as well, to some degree. Well, I mean, when they, yeah, but he had I'm, saying, I'm not just saying him, there was other sheets as well. Rav cut his own field. Right, and then and Shmuel had tainas on him, according to one shot in the Gemara. Shmuel yeah, had... I'm just saying, but either a bunch of themselves were doing the malachah themselves. They weren't just they weren't just passing for other people. It wasn't just theoretical. Right. No, that's true. Yeah, and a chami. It's it's uh, I thought... for they themselves have to be more careful. People are watching. Right? I thought that was goof of the point of of the machlekes Rav and Shmuel before. Rabbanus is a balance of of when you pass in something, you have to hold of it. Also, you have to be a little bit with Flemish Rosadin. That is what Rabbanus is. The other way around, you could be well, the Rav has to try and be Mako for the constituents, but he himself could be Mahmer. To some extent, if the constituents see that he's never Mako on anything that he paskins, they're going right. to start thinking, who are we? We're, we're, we're what? Gershon, right. the struggle is real, Gershon. He's going to get a lot more Shilas asked him. Yeah. Didn't you say you wanted to do the Mishnah? <laughs> Oh, thank you, parents. 
You know what? I didn't have it's okay. We'll do the Mishnah tomorrow, Bez Hashem. Naftali, you got us. You got us. Yaakov, yeah, Shir's regular time tomorrow? Bez Hashem, yeah. And Kitzur Shir Lachar should be at 8 o'clock and then uh, Shtaf at the regular time. Bez Hashem. When are you leaving, Tiago? About an hour and a half. Yeah. All right. Shtaf. Wait, 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 when I come to Phoenix, don't think I don't have to play rabbi. I have to play rabbi more here than I have to than I have to in Farakoi. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Did Gershon drop off your car? What? Did Gershon drop off your car? I didn't speak to him. I didn't speak to him. So, uh, you let, I'll, oh, uh, let me know if you need me. Yes, okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Zagazunt, everybody. Zagazunt. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.